everyone, my name is Phil and welcome to Phil Does 3D. I'm a multimedia and 3D artist and I stream live on Twitch on Mondays and Tuesdays at 5pm Pacific Time in the United States, which is midday in Australia or 1am if you're in the UK. Remember, if you miss the live streams, you can catch up with the premier event streams, which are on a Friday and Saturday at 2 p.m. Pacific time in the U.S., which is 9 a.m. in Australia, or 10 p.m. if you are in the U.K. I hope all you guys and girls are well. Uh, we're going to continue working on our Temple of the Wings model that we're creating in 3D Studio Max. We've almost finished the modeling stage, and then we're going to move on to the um, texturing. Sniper Girl, it's good to see you, Sniper Girl. How is everything? I saw on Discord your mum's surgery went well, which is great news. That's that's awesome. So I'm glad everything went well for her and, and all that. Hey, Android Lust, it's good to see you, buddy. So, yes, excellent news, Sniper Girl. I'm glad it all went well. Your mum's a trooper for sure. Uh, you're good. The surgery went well. Yes, it did go well. Sniper Girl posted on the Discord server which is good to hear. The surgery is always a very stressful thing. So I'm glad it went well. My apologies for being a little distracted here. Yes, excellent news. Excellent, excellent news. Um, yes, so that's what we're doing. <laughs> just, just give me two secs, guys. You know what work are like. They can't leave me alone. There we go. There we go. Ignore them. I shouldn't have my email client open while I'm streaming, should I? That way I probably would not know. Uh, Sniper Girl says it's going well so far. She's in ICU, uh, has enough wires attached to her that she should be able to get pre HBO. <laughs> uh, the wires are there to keep to make, to make sure everything is going well. But I'm glad she's she's doing better. I'm glad the surgery went well. It's a, it's, I'm sure it's a big relief for you, Sniper Girl. I mean, she's still in ICU, so they'll keep a close eye on her, but um, the worst part is over, the actual surgery. And you said it was a quad bypass or something? I'm pretty sure you mentioned in your message. Quad bypass, yeah, wow. That's a full-on heart operation there. Kanu, it's good to see you, Kanu. How are you? How have you been? Did you have a good Christmas, New Year? I'm not sure if I've spoken to you since then. How's everything going? Snappy Girl says, uh, it has been awake since yesterday. I bet you have. I bet you're exhausted. Uh, I can imagine you would be wrecked, Sniper Girl. I would be. Quad bypass, yep. Yeah, you must be completely completely wrecked, Sniper Girl. Uh, not, not to mean, not, not just because you've been awake for so long, but just the stress of it all is incredibly tiring on you, on anyone's body. Stress, stress does t terrible things to your body. So I can imagine. Uh, but it's good to see you too, Kanu. I hope you're well. I hope everything's going good for you. You've been up to anything interesting? You've made any new models or anything? You guys know I love to see the work that you're doing, so please show me on the Discord server. Smurfberry Barbecue, it's good to see you too. Always good to see the Smurf. Yes, yeah, so what are we doing? Oh, that's right, we're doing our um, Temple of the Winds, aren't we? What, what is that? Just, oh, okay, that's what that is. <laughs> I'm wondering what's going on over here, and that, that's what's going on. Let me get out of this. Okay. Uh, Kanu says, uh, Android Lust, not big, hello, Android Lust says, that's not very, <laughs> Android Lust has got a muscle man model for, for Smurf, very, okay. Uh, Sniper Girl says, working on the cages currently, revising the front one quite a bit. I did see the uh, images you posted, we'll check those out in two seconds. You're doing good, Kanu, that's good. No, I'm doing well, thanks for asking, yep, no, everything's good on my end, oh, well, yeah, Pretty good. <laughs> a friend of mine is uh, probably has to have a stent put in his heart, so that's not too good. But as far as my health goes, it seems to be okay. <laughs> um, I've been just vegging out over the weekends, haven't been working myself too hard. So it's all good. It's all been good. <laughs> uh, 
What are you talking about? So my priest says, what? Uh, since, oh, since he hates the mandroid loss, says, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's check out the um, images that Sniper Girl posted. <laughs> so Sniper Girl's been working on uh, a van and she's posted some images, so let's check them out. Again, if you don't want to wait for me, you can jump on the Discord server yourself. Just click that blue graphic in my panels below my stream if you want an invite link to the Discord server. And she's been working on these uh, this panelling that goes around the windows. It looks very cool. Nice close-up shot over here. Let's have a look at that one. Nice. And the one at the front. So yes, jump on Discord. Sniper Girl has posted a lot of different images of what she's working on for this project she's doing. Very cool. I think you did mention... Um, so you, the cages for the windows, they're currently work in progress. Planning on having different styles on each window to make it look as if they were gathered and made at different times, which is a great idea. Uh, remember just too, though, when you texture it up to make to make it look nice and beaten up and, you know, not pretty and you. You know what I mean. You know what I mean, Sniper Girl. But it's looking very cool. Very cool indeed. Smepper says, that's Johnny Johnny Bravo. He doesn't count. <laughs> Android Lust says, the van reminds me of Scooby-Doo's mystery machine, but post-apocalyptic. It does look like the Scooby-Doo van a little bit. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Sniper Girl says, "Yeah, I, I, I know what you mean. Love making stuff that makes look that makes it look torn up. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. I, I make it look, you know, dented and old, or maybe rusting in some spots. Or you know what I mean. You know what I mean. I'm sure you're going to do a great job. I've seen your texture work. It's, it's excellent, so I'm sure it will be good." Android Lust says, "Johnny counts." <laughs> you guys. And girls. And Android Lust has also just posted an image, so let's check that out. Kenny says, yeah, post-apocalyptic vibe. Yes. It's going to be very cool. She's, she's created a whole scene, a, a filler-up gas station. That she's going. I think she's planning on putting the car into, and that all looks very cool as well. Nicely textured up, beautiful modelling. And this looks excellent. As usual, Android Lust, you do really great character stuff. Love it. Yeah, it looks great. I do like the your character work. Always very, very nice Android Lust. And I'm still doing my chibi stuff as well, actually. I'll show you guys the latest chibi I just did. Why not? Considering everybody's looking at, the, at everyone else's work at the moment, let's check out mine. Uh, where are we? This one. This is the latest chibi. I'm still working on this. I haven't finished the um, the design yet. In that I may change some of the dimensions of some things, but that's the latest chibi I just created. My filled chibi dragon. Snappy Girl says, uh, even though I couldn't stand Johnny Bravo as a kid, Smepper says, uh, hold the hecking hell up. Phil makes chibis. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to do something a little bit different from doing photorealistic stuff all the time. So I decided I'd turn myself into a, a couple of chibi characters. So I've done one as me in a onesie dressed as a wolf, and this is one of me dressed in a dragon suit, dragon onesie. Uh, Snappy Girl says, that's so adorable. Andrew Lust says, Johnny Bravo was the ideal man, perfect form and everything. <laughs> So yes, I just thought I'd show you that chibi that I've been, uh, that's what I've been working on recently. I'm going to do a couple more. Yeah, a couple more. I'll probably have four different chibis of Phil. Four different Phil chibis. Alrighty. And now we're done in 3D, by the way, as well. So composited in Photoshop with 2D elements, but the actual character is a 3D character. So I can appreciate nice character work. Uh, Android Lust, it looks great. Very macho man here, Johnny Rubb.
Textures look good too. All looks good. Uh, Snapper Girl says Android Lust and a complete idiot with an IQ equal to a rock. <laughs> They're talking about Johnny Bravo, I think. Perfect man, yep. <laughs> oh, wow. But very nice. All your guys' work is looking great, and I can't wait to see this textured up, um, Sniper Girl. It's going to look so awesome. Nice detail. I think Sniper Girl was mentioning in the Discord channel she's probably going to turn the um, the mesh here into a, an alpha because she's creating a game model, unless I'm mistaken. I'm pretty sure that's what she said. So. Sniper Echo, good to see you, buddy. How are you? Android Lust says, hey, Sniper. It's good to see you, Sniper Echo. Uh, so, yes, I showed you my chippy because I just wanted to work on something that was different from photorealistic stuff because that's what I do all day long at work, constant renderings of photorealistic stuff. Um, so making a character that was a chibi was a nice change for me. Now, I don't normally do character stuff either, so... So out of my comfort zone, creating a character, and out of my comfort zone, not doing photorealistic rendering. Android Lust says, Sniper Girl, was the front window time-consuming? Yeah, I was wondering that too, actually. I've closed it down now, but that, that grate on the front window looks... Um, did, how did you do that? Did you... Did you... Yeah, how did you do <laughs> Did you do a displacement, or how, how was that created? Sniper Girl says, uh, it was, took a while to get the circles the right size. Oh, okay. Because I was just wondering if you could maybe do it with some sort of displacement map as well. That might be a way to do it too that could speed it up. Anyway, you made it now. That's the important thing. Don't need to speed up something that's already made. Oh, yes. So what are we doing? We are going to continue working on our terrace here. So this is the, the three-stepped version that I'm going to be using for the beauty renders once I texture it up. Uh, but because I'm creating like a kit bash for this model for my store, I wanted to create a version where there were no stairs, one step, two steps, and four steps. So that's what these are. These are going to be part of the kit bash. Um, they're all going to use the same materials as the main one here, so I won't have to add more materials. I'll just use the same material. Uh, it just gives people the option of how many stairs they want around their model or their renderer. So we were going through and making sure we removed all of the bits and pieces, like uh, in through here, we have to remove the decorative work where it hits the lower terrace. So let's continue doing that. Uh, it's not because there's a section with the holes and the um and the outside frame are different models. Andrew Dust says I was thinking that if I made it, it would have took a while too, unless there's some sort of shortcut. I don't know. Again, I'm wonder I'm wondering if you could possibly do it with a displacement map. It, it circles it could be hard with displacement unless you're working with a mega high res mesh, but you might be able to. She's made it now. So. <laughs> FS Bolt, it's good to see you, FS Bolt. How are you? It's good to see all you guys and girls. Okay, so I'm just going to go through here and make sure I've removed uh, those decorative pieces from around the terraces here where we don't want them. And that one looks good to go. Um, I'm just going to open up this group, though, and remove that spline because we don't need it anymore. Sniper Girl says the outside section is just modelled out. The inside section I use duplicate special to evenly space out the cylinders. Okay, and then I use the lattice to um, to bend the cylinders to match the curvature of the windshield. I understand what you're saying. Let's close that uh, group. I get where you're coming from. Okay, so this one, we need to remove the uh, decorative pieces from in here. So you're going to be these ones. 
Oi, oi, oi. I don't know who you're talking to, Episwald. If you're asking me if I've used 3D Coat, no. <laughs> I am familiar with the, with the program, but I haven't used it personally, no. Looks like we forgot to add a, um, a decorative piece here as well to fix that. But I have heard good things about it. It's supposed to be very good. Do you use uh, 3D Coat, Episwald? Snappy Girl says, after that, I use Booleans to cut the holes. Brought the inside section into ZBrush, dynameshed it, and, and then did a deformation polish to round it all. Don't you love Dynamesh? I love Dynamesh in ZBrush. It's so good. I like remesh, Z Remesher as well. Yeah, don't, don't be scared of Booleans. I use Booleans quite a lot too. Uh, I like Booleans. They can be a bit of a pain. Um but they can save a lot of modeling time too. Well, you saw me use booleans for these, the, the tops of these um, columns, they were booleaned. So I'm just going through and removing these pieces we don't want. And Max is being incredibly annoying. What is going on there? Uh, looks like I might have something that I don't want as part of that group. Let's get rid of that. And we want that one gone. Yes, Max does have an array mod a modifier. I don't know if it has an array modifier. Sniper. Um, I don't generally, I don't think I've ever used an array modifier in Max. Just let me select something so I can get my modifier stack showing up. It would surprise me if they did because they have a special tools for, for doing an array. They do have a, a tool here, which is no, it's not. It's on the array though. No, generally the, there are array tools that are in here, and they're a line, and they're array. So no, to my knowledge, I don't think there is an array modifier. Uh, Galen, it's good to see you, Galen. How are you? Uh, Galen says, Booleans usually uh, go extremely smoothly or horribly wrong. <laughs> there is no middle ground. That's pretty pretty true, actually. Yeah, it'll either work or it won't work. Um, and I find the best way to use a Boolean, if, you, if you're going to be using Booleans quite a bit, is to make sure your base mesh that you're cutting from, if, particularly if you're doing cuts, is high poly enough. If it's too low poly, then the Boolean can, can create some really crappy geometry. But if the um, base mesh is high poly enough, generally booleans work pretty well. And you can then reduce the poly count once you've done the bully, boolean operation anyway. Sniper Girl says, they don't scare me as much as they used to. Uh, I knew, I know that with Maya, by default, booleans suck. Your Max's boolean tools are pretty good, actually. They've improved the Autodesk. Of, there's like three different, two different boolean tools in Max, like two different optimized tools. And the, the new one is, is pretty good. And they've improved it again with Max 2019 because now you can Boolean spline shapes, which is very cool. I actually haven't updated to 2019. I'm still on 2018 simply because there wasn't really anything in 2019 that I needed to use in my daily driver work. So I'll probably update to 2020 though when it's released, which should be next month. New version of Max. Opus World says, no, I just stumbled upon 3D Coat recently. It looked pretty cool. It is very cool. A lot of people love 3D Coat. I've heard nothing but good things about it. Um, I know a lot of people really like it. Let's just open this group up because there's a couple here, one here I need to remove. So, yes, I've heard good things about 3D Coat, but not, haven't personally used it.
Max loves jumping all around the place on me. That's the four, that's the two. Okay, let's um, close up this group and I missed one on the other group, so let's grab that. Andrew Thus says, Bullions loves to add a lot of my history and personality as a noob. I didn't know that, uh, didn't know that at one point. Another girl says, I have a plugin that's called uh, Crease Plus. Works well with Bullions and will allow you to export to ZBrush and solidify the mesh automatically. Well, that's cool. Very handy. Galen says, doing okay. Took the time to update my art station over the weekend. Well, you guys know I've only just recently, I, I've had an art station account for a couple of years. Uh, and it's only in the last, set this year, in January was the first time I actually started uploading any work to it. So, <laughs> so I, I feel where you're coming from, Galen. My phone just went off. I'll ignore it. You guys have my full attention. I did hear it go probably work. Uh, Snappy Girl says, FS Vault, I have a pro license of 3D code. Personally, I never never got into it. I'm not saying it's a good, bad program, just couldn't really get into it. Snappy says, I can haze your licenses. Your license. FS Vault says, talking to Snappy Girl. <laughs> I'm just going to check the other side now. And I th oh, we do need to remove that one. And that one's okay, so that one is done. Done and dusted. Let's close that group. Okay, so four step done, two step done. Let's have a look at one step. Uh, it is a good program, FS Vault, 3D Coat. Again, I know of it, not used it. I know people that like that do use it and, and love it. So certainly very capable software from what I've heard. You should check it out, though, for sure. Uh, it does a lot of stuff that other software does, like uh, ZBrush, and you can do poly painting and all that sort of stuff as well in, in uh, 3D Code. It does P text textures like Mari does, so yep, I'm pretty sure it does UDIMS as well. So it's pretty, it's a capable program. Snuffy Girl is asking if there's a way to give licenses that you buy on Steam. I don't know. Galen says, saw a couple of challenges on ArtStation, but too late for me to get going on an entry. There'll always be more challenges on ArtStation. They have them very regularly. And you guys know I've just started selling my 3D models on ArtStation as well. I've only got a very small, I've only put four of my models up from my catalogue because uh, I just want to test the waters and see what it's like selling on ArtStation because it's so new. The marketplace is relatively new. Snappy Girl says, is there, if there is, then sure, don't use it. Snappy's Bolt says, your art station has the future challenge going on right now. Smokeberry says, probably not on Steam. Also, I thought the version of 3D Code on Steam was an indie and had limitations, not a full license. Could could be true. Android Lust says, I'm assuming you love space-related stuff. Sci-fi, he's talking to Galen. Galen likes doing spaceships and stuff. Although I've seen Galen do other stuff, so that's not true that he only does spaceships. Just like I don't only do terraces and angels. <laughs> Did you, you guys notice there is not one angel in this model, the new one that I'm creating? Uh, Snappy Girl says, pretty sure mine says pro. Guess I could be wrong. Checking now. Smepper says it also does a lot of things that uh, other tools don't, like the uh, whole voxel pipeline and symmetry options other than bilateral. Galen says, yeah, I do, Android last. Uh, says, are you guys aware of any other websites that do more 3D art challenges? Uh, Eon View, they do uh, art competitions as well, so you should check them out. 
Eon View, VUE. Uh, they don't run them all the time, all year round, but they do do them, generally they do one or two a year. Anyone else? Off the top of my head, no. No, I don't know. I'm sure there are others, though. I even think companies like Autodesk, they did challenges as well. So if you're a Meyer or a Max user or something. Um, mm, mm, mm. Smoko says you can have N symmetry in 3D Coat with 12 way symmetry, a 3D Coat can do it. Mm, cool. Sniper Girl says, yes, it's a consumer license, assuming that's equal to what would be considered a pro. I'm pretty sure it probably would be. What, what are you talking about, Sniper Echo? What, 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 what? Sniper Echo says, yet, Phil, not one yet. What, 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 what do you mean? What are you saying? What are you trying to say? Not yet, Phil, not one yet. I don't understand, Sniper Echo. It... <laughs> <laughs> is it late for you? Are you tired? Uh, Smoveri says uh, sculpting symmetry, that is, yep. Yeah. You can actually, the symmetry is built into Mari now as well. It's a, <laughs> can you believe it's only just been added? It was added um, with the last update, which I installed a couple of weeks ago. So now you can paint in symmetry in Mari for the first time in all these years. It's a great addition, but, uh, yeah, it's amazing it took them so long to, to, to add it. I don't tend to do a lot of symmetry painting, to be honest with you. But it's good to have it there. Uh, Smapri says, I missed Dominance War. Andrew Dust says, uh, Hum 3D does a car rendering challenge yearly. Well, there you go. Sniper Echo says, Phil does 3D, not one angel, yet I mean. Oh, okay, I, okay, I understand. Not one yet. Well, that's very true. I could put one in. I won't. I won't do that. I, I, a friend of mine looked at some of my work and said, wow, you really like angels, don't you? I do like the statues, you know. I'll cop to that. I like the angel statues, and I do tend to use them quite a bit. But I'm, I'm going to resist and not put angels in this uh, on this model. Uh, Epis Bolt says to Android Lust, thanks, I'll check them out. And Smurfberry says, I'm pretty sure Polycount has an art competition. Art Station does too. Yeah, Polycount probably would. That's just a good suggestion, Smurfberry. Galen says, beware the weeping angels. <laughs> We've been watching too much Doctor Who. Actually, the weeping angel, angels were really cool in Doctor Who. Cool as in a really uh, interesting idea for a, uh, for a character. Let me get into position here where I can see these to delete them. What do you guys think of the new Doctor Who, the uh, the lady that's doing it at the moment? What's your opinion? I'm curious. Do you like her? Do you think she does a good job as Doctor Who, as a lady Doctor Who? I mean, personally, I'm glad that they're um, that that they've, they've chosen a woman to be Doctor Who. I think that's a great thing. Uh, my only critique of the new Doctor Who, as far as I'm concerned, is, I don't know, the stories have been a bit meh. Ganon says, haven't seen the new series. Yeah, again, I like her as an actress, I think, and I, I like the fact that it's a female Doctor Who, but the stories that they've written for the show have been pretty meh. At least that's what I think. They've been a bit meh. Let's close that group and open this one up. Uh, Andrew Doss says, I haven't seen in any of the Doctor Whos. Apparently I haven't watched a lot of stuff yet. <laughs> Well, that's okay. That just means that uh, you can binge on stuff if, if and when you do want to watch it, which is actually with – I've noticed with Netflix because I, I, I watch a bit of Netflix. <laughs> it's really easy to binge on a TV series because Netflix auto-plays the next series after the last one finishes if you don't stop it after 10 seconds. 
So you can, you, at least I find, I, I can be a vegetable on the couch watching like four hours of some TV series because I just can't stop when I start. So being able to binge is, is, is a good thing. So I, I, I love Netflix for that fact that I can binge on something if I really like it. Uh, Gannon says, wasn't too keen on the last doc. Yeah, no, Peter Capaldi, I think his name was. I wasn't too keen on him either. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Just, yeah. I don't know what it was that I didn't like about Peter Capaldi. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I liked his companion, uh, but, yeah, I didn't really like him that much. And the new Doctor Who, I like the woman who is the actress, but I don't really like the stories. The stories have been pretty crappy. I guess it's hard to make new, to come up with new ideas for stories after so many years of creating Doctor Who, um, maybe. No. Snappy Girl says, looking at the license that they have with 3D Coat on Steam... Uh, are an are a amateur and professional license doesn't say commercial license anymore. So guessing they just changed the name. You want to be careful with that stuff too if you are using it for commercial stuff. Make sure you're getting the right license. You don't want them to come at you with uh, a lawsuit or anything or say that you you know you shouldn't be using this license. It it gets very complicated sometimes licensing stuff. Commercial license, personal license, indie license, uh, professional license. Uh, yeah, it's all very confusing. Snowberry says, interesting. Epis Bolt says, uh, am I the only one who gets mad at Netflix when you hover over a title for one second and it starts playing in the... Yeah, I know, it is. It's very annoying, isn't it? The other thing, too, I've noticed now with Netflix, when you, when you open up their app, you, you know, on Windows or whatever, well, maybe even the website, I don't generally watch Netflix through the browser. I usually use the Netflix app. But they've got the very, the very top of the page. They start auto-playing a preview of whatever whatever they whatever it is at the top, the, the show that they're promoting. That's a new thing, and I'm finding that a bit annoying as well. So I understand what you're saying, F.S. Bolt. Galen says uh, uh, his personality seemed a bit erratic. Yeah, yeah. He seemed very dark too. I don't mind a dark character. Like, I don't mind if the Doctor is dark. It makes them more interesting. But he just seemed, I don't know, his character was so different from the other Doctor Whos before him. He wasn't erratic enough, if that makes sense. You know how doc Doctor is usually pretty erratic and all over the place? I, Peter Capaldi wasn't really like that. I think that's what I didn't like. He just didn't seem, I don't know. Uh, yeah, he wasn't erratic enough. He wasn't, he wasn't, I don't know. <laughs> As an actor, he's very good, though. Galen says his uh, personality seemed a bit erratic. Yeah, but you, you know what I mean when I say he wasn't like the other doctors, because the other doctors would... would Shoot off on tangents more. Maybe that's what the word I'm, I'm trying to explain. Yeah, whereas he wasn't like that. He didn't go off on all these different tangents and come out with these odd, bizarre things when they, he was having a conversation with people. He was pretty much down the line. Andrew Luss says, if it's fault, that probably only happens if your internet is decent. <laughs> We've all got potato internet. Well, at least I've got potato internet. Actually, just before the stream, you know, I, I have a pre-order with a company to get the NBN, which I made in 2017 when I was supposed to get the NBN. So I've, ha I've had this pre-order since 2017 with this uh, service provider, internet service provider. Um, and they called me just before the stream, actually, and said, we haven't forgotten about you. We're trying to get you connected. The NBN says you'll have it in April. We'll see. <laughs> Until then, I've got to put up with my potato internet. Oh, uh, it looks like uh, OBS is. What's going on with OBS? Hopefully you guys can still see me. I just saw OBS go into orange for a minute. It seems to be back in the green now. Don't you do that, potato internet. Whoa. 
Uh, Sniper says, I feel like I'm the only person I know that doesn't use Netflix. Well, you don't have to have Netflix. It's just good, you know, to watch what you want, when you want sort of thing, as opposed to cable. I actually have cable television as well, which I'm thinking about getting rid of because it's so dreadful. Everything they play on cable TV is just rubbish. Uh, Foxtel, I have Foxtel. And it's crap. And it's expensive. Why am I paying for it? I tend to watch Netflix more than anything. Actually, I keep the cable TV because of the um, news channels, the international news channels. I'm one of those old people that likes to watch the news. I like to watch BBC and uh, Al Jazeera and all the overseas news channels. So, um, Sniper Girl says... Uh, like I said, I don't use it. According to Steam, I have 46 minutes in 3D code. From what I remember, I really don't like the interface. Yeah, well, the interface is a really important thing for me. You guys know if an interface is rubbish, then I hate the program uh, because it's it's the thing you interact with all the time. It's, the key, these companies have to get it right. You don't want to make an artist's job harder by making a really rubbish interface. ZBrush, Pixologic. Um, you're supposed to be making things easy for artists, not harder. So make a really... Put a lot of work into your interface. It's important. So I get where you're coming from, Sniper Girl. Uh, Sniper Rick says, I feel like, oh, Sniper Girl says, uh, got it back in 2013 before they allowed you to refund through Steam. Yeah, and I actually think of that refund thing, there, there was a huge problem in this country with Steam in Australia. I think it went to the government and to the courts and stuff about Steam not giving refunds because consumer rights in Australia are pretty strict. They have to allow refunds. It's, it's, it's law. So Steam got in trouble for that, and that's, uh, I think, part of the reason they had to change their ways. It's a good thing, giving refunds. I mean, you know, thing might not be suitable. You want to be able to refund it. Galen says, uh, quirky, personality, uh, quirky as a personality is one thing, but Peter was more schizophrenic. <laughs> yeah. Uh uh, David Tennant, I think, I, if, if it's who I'm thinking of, David Tennant, I think, was probably my favourite modern Doctor. But I liked, um, as far as the classic Doctor Who series go, I liked um, uh, the curly-headed one. He was a Doctor for quite a few years. Oh, why can't I remember his name? He, recently, he died not that long ago. He was my favourite classic Doctor. Smepper says, don't invoke his, the name of OBS. <laughs> I'm keeping an eye on it now. It seems that it's back in the green. It just I noticed briefly it went into the orange, and it's, I can see it says it dropped 32 frames, 0.0%. So 32 frames you guys wouldn't even notice. It's obviously just a bit of a – had a bit of a glitch for a second. Potato internet. Uh, Galen says, no Netflix here. Well, oh, okay. <laughs> you don't have to have Netflix. I mean, you know – and Netflix have just put their prices up, which I'm a bit annoyed about as well. But anyway, let's not go there. It's still cheaper than cable. Sniper says, I haven't seen anything on there and I'd like to watch honestly, that I'd like to watch honestly. <laughs> okay. Uh, also, I, I, I kind of like working. Well, that's fair enough too. I do too, generally. But you guys know I've um, I've made it a point to not work myself sick. So I'm, I'm trying to... Enjoy my free time a bit more. <laughs> um, so, yes, but don't work too hard, Sniper Echo. You'll make yourself sick like I did last year, and that was not good. Andrew Dust says, uh, yeah, that's why I haven't watched a lot of stuff. Like, you guys are just workaholics, aren't you? Galen says, uh, Tom, Tom Baker. Thank you very much, Galen. Tom Baker was my favourite too, yeah. It was Tom Baker was my favourite classic Doctor, Doctor Who followed by David Tennant. I'm exactly the same, Galen. We think alike. Galen says, brown curly hair was Tom Baker. White curly hair was John... No, no, not John Pertwee. No, <laughs> he was terrible. I hated him as Doctor. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Tom Baker. Tom Baker is the one I'm thinking of. Let's just open up this group and get rid of this spline because we don't need it. Do I have another spline there? What is that? I think I do. No. Yes. No. Yes. 
No, yes, no, yes, no. I do, but it's part of this group, so we'll look at that in a minute. Let's close up the group. So I don't accidentally move something I shouldn't. And you'll be happy to see I hit the Windows key there by mistake, but because we locked it yesterday, it didn't pop up the, the little menu. So, because so I was telling the guys and girls yesterday that um, I have a habit of when I want to hit the Alt key, hitting the Windows key on the keyboard by mistake. And I had the option to, to, to lock it on my keyboard, but I just kept forgetting to turn that on. Not anymore. It's all locked now. I can't accidentally hit it. All right. So let us go through here and uh, get rid of some of the splines we don't want. Like this one. And there is another spline in here as well, so I'm just going to close this group up. And I can see you. I can see you there, spline. I know you're there. Let's just jump into isolation mode. Open our group and delete our spline. Did I? I think deleting the spline uh, deleted the group, so I'm just going to regroup that. I'm actually going to attach these all together in a minute. Android Lot says, well, if I don't do any sort of 3D within 24 hours, I feel guilty. Well, fair enough. I mean, you know, I love doing 3D, and if I don't, if I don't do some work, I wouldn't say within 24 hours, but yeah, I... I I, w I don't know if I'd say I feel guilty either, but I enjoy it, so I don't mind doing it. That's always the problem, and that's why I got sick last year, because when I do 3D, I don't really consider it work. When you in, Because I enjoy doing it, it's it's more, it's more a fun thing for me to do. So, and, and because it's fun, I tend to overdo it. Or I, I tend to do it a bit too much, more than I should. Put it that way. So I, I, I get where you're coming from. But it's important to have a break. You don't want to work yourself silly. Sniper Girl says Android Dust, I'm the same way, been up since yesterday and in Maya for that reason. <laughs> you too, you too, Sniper Girl, you take it easy because you've had a stressful period over the last few weeks um, and stress can really take a bad, make, uh, have a bad toll on your body. So don't overstress yourself. Android Dust says, you're, you're too 3D addicted, Phil. Get some help, all of you. <laughs> That's right. We're all addicted to the 3D. We have the 3D addiction. And that's a good thing. Sniper Girl says, uh, we'll take it easy when I make it into the industry. I'm, I'm not, yeah, I'm just, all I'm saying, Sniper Girl, is you've been through a bit of a stressful period, just... Don't push your body too hard. That's all I'm saying. You don't want to make yourself sick. But if, uh, like I said, it's uh, I, I can't talk. I've done the same thing. I do the same thing because I don't consider it work. I consider it fun. So I tend to do it more than I should probably. 3D, that is. Um, Andrew Loss says, that's the spirit's number. Well, that's right. You've got to be determined to get anything in this life. I'm afraid that's just the way it is now. Gone are the days like in the, the 20s where there was, particularly after the, uh, would be the Second World War, I'm assuming? Well, no, the First World War. <laughs> first? Yeah, probably the first. Um, there were, so many people were killed that after the war had finished, there were many more jobs than people to fill them. So, you know, people could wander around Europe for a couple of years enjoying themselves and come back home to their home country and get a job immediately. Those sort of days are gone now. So we all have to work hard to get anything in life, I'm afraid. It sucks, but that's that's the way it is. 
Looks like we have another spline here. No, I've selected the wrong thing. Or maybe that's not a spline. Although it looks like a spline. Um, Android Dust says he's saying we need another world. No, I'm not saying that at all, Android Dust. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying we need another world war. That's the last thing I want to say. They're terrible. Any war is always terrible, whether it's a world war or just a civil war or any sort of war. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that at all. Uh, of course, there is that rumour that uh, the First World War was created. It was a trade war, and it was created specifically because the elites were concerned that the pop that the general population were, were getting too much control. So they set about to create a trade war, which that which then killed millions of people. So well, don't quote me on millions, but it killed a, a lot of people. And 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 the uh, the rumor was that it was done because they were they were afraid that the general population were getting were having starting to have too much control over society and not the elites. Who knows? Wouldn't surprise me. I'll take my tinfoil hat off now. Snabigil says, uh, when I was in the Navy, I went three days straight without sleep during a deployment and uh, was on my feet working pretty much the entire time. Know how to handle, deal with stress. Well, work, working in the armed forces, yeah, that would be an excellent way to learn how to deal with stress. I've never actually worked, I've never actually been in the armed forces. Um, I... I you know how much I hate guns. They freak me out. So I, I don't think I could be in the armed forces. I just, I know you were in the Navy, so I don't assume you carried guns on, on your battleships and stuff. Maybe you do. I don't know. I don't know how the, uh, how the military works in the United States, but I imagine it would be incredibly stressful. Galen says, so that's how you got your foot in the door. I don't know who you're talking to. <laughs> Well, you're talking to me? You're talking about war? You t oh, come on. F.S. Bob says it feels like you need to be elite to make it into into a 3D company. Well, they end, they're going to take the best of the best that they can find. Put it that way. So the better you are, the more chance you have. Uh, it's like any employer. They're going to try and employ the person that they think is the most talented because it just makes sense for them. Uh, so if you're up against other people that are better than you, then yeah. That's why you should always practice. Just keep doing 3D, because the more you do, the better you'll get. So, um, Sniper says, cancelling my holiday abroad after hearing that. <laughs> Android Lust says, Epis Vault, I think that too. That's why I feel guilty if I don't do 3D. Well, yeah, it's important to, to get as good as you can, because the company will hire the best person that they can. So you want to make sure you're the best person and you and you, you achieve that by doing 3D and practice makes perfect, as they say. The more you do it, the better you'll get. But all I'm saying is don't do it to, to, to the detriment of your own health. Uh, I can, when I start, when I'm doing 3D stuff, I can work and I completely forget about eating. So I can start, I can start, I get up at like um, 6.30 in the morning and I generally start work at about, Seven, it's maybe seven thirty, depending on how long it takes me to have my first cup of coffee, uh, and then I'm working all day, and it, it, it can get to like eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock at night, midnight, before I realise I haven't eaten anything all day, uh, and that's not good. It, it's easy to do though, because I I've done, I do it. Uh, FS Bolt says, yeah, I hear you 100%. Plus, if you take a few days off, you always forget the little tips in programs and get sloppy. It'll be interesting, actually, guys, when I jump into Mari to do some texturing because it's been a while since I've been in Mari. Uh, let's see how long it takes me to remember how to use the program. To yo, Phil, Galen says. Um, oh, I didn't know you were a Navy vet as well, Galen. All these Navy people, military people. 
Is there a large population of the US that joins the military? I get that impression. It seems to be quite a few people that end up doing some military service, whether it's, uh, you know, whatever whatever field within the military services. But, like, we have military in this country too, but it's a relatively small percentage of the population that, that go and do any military service in this country. It's not compulsory or anything. I, I, I know, I'm pretty sure it's not in the US either. Compulsory. I think one of the few countries where it is is Israel. Sniper Girl says, I feel the same way about guns. Uh, I was a gas turbine system tech. Wow. Mechanical. Uh, I maintained jet engines, fuel systems, hydraulics, pumps, valves, pretty much everything that was in the engine room I was assigned to. Wow. So you could probably fix a car. <laughs> I know nothing about engines or anything like that. Yes, so I'm impressed, Sniper Girl. I think that's really cool. Really cool. If it's well, uh, Galen says subservice, and if it's well, was asking if that's a submarine, it's an addiction pill. Android Lust says, Phil forgot. Well, listen, it, it's been a while since I've been working in Mari, so who knows? Um, Smurper, I could have, and, and they've um, updated it too, like they've changed the interface and stuff in Mari. So <laughs> we'll see when we jump into Mari how much Phil has remembered and how much he has forgotten. Uh, F. S. Bolt says, "Isn't that isn't it one percent or less?" Galen says, "Yeah, not as many uh, as it used to have." Smurfy says, "Compared to the total population, it's not much." Google says, "One point three million active duty plus eight hundred thousand reserve in 2017." Android Lust says, "I might be wrong, but some people who join the military want to get out of their hometown, and it's a ticket out." Well, that's true too. I, I, I don't know how it works in the United States with the military service, but. In Australia, if you if you take on military service, then the government, the Defence Department, will pay for your education. So, the, if you want to do if you want to do engineering, they'll pay for your university education to become an engineer as part of your military service. So you serve and you study, and the, the defence pays for it. So a lot of people enter military service in this country. To get that quali- to get a qualification that they don't have to pay for, because university in this country is incredibly expensive. I know it is in the US as well. So, I know quite a few people have joined, have taken on military service for that in, in Australia anyway. But it's still a very small popula- percentage of the population compared to the rest of the of the country that, that do military service. Snuffy Girl says, according to Pew Research, 7.1% of adults served in the military at one point in their lives. Mm. It's actually higher than I thought it would be. Pardon me. <laughs> yeah, it's actually higher than I um, than I thought it would be. Gannon says, uh, by the way, Phil... Uh, Nuke ET, electronics technician, nuclear field. I maintain the controls, control systems of the uh, nuclear reactor and operator and operators. I'm impressed, Galen. That that that's for both both you and Sniper Girl. I'm full on impressed. I really am. Wow. Yeah, the things you would never assume people would do, like or particularly people in my chat. I, I'm I'm impressed. I'm impressed both with Galen and uh, Sniper Girl. Incredibly. Sniper Girls posted a link to the changing face of the American. Um, I'm just going to check this out because I'm curious. I know some people watching my channel are probably thinking, you're doing 3D. Why on earth are you looking at military stuff? But buggy you. It's my channel and I'll look at it. I'll do what I want, as Cartman would say. Uh, changing face of Americans' veteran population. 20.4 million in 2016, representing less than 10% of US total adult population. It's really interesting, actually. So it is the share is declining of um, with military experience. 
Snapper says, yeah, that's also a good way to frame it, Sniper Girl, percent who have been in service at one point or another. And Galen says, and sadly, 22 veterans in the US take their lives each day. I actually watched a documentary not that long ago on um, on PTSD and things like that, of people that have served in the military and how little support they get from the government once they leave the once they leave service, and that's that that's terrible. But it's the same in this country. We've had there's a, a, at least once a year there are stories surface in the media about people who have taken their own life um, because they haven't been able to cope once they once they've left the military and and the defence give them no support at all, which is criminal. It's just criminal. These people serve their country they you know they do things that, that most most general citizens don't do and to get no support from from their government when they leave their service is just it's criminal it is criminal and Australia is just as bad so it's terrible Galen really terrible Sniper Girl says, uh, yeah, not surprised, to be honest. Government really doesn't do a good job, uh, a good enough job of supporting the vets, in my opinion. I agree. Government Australia doesn't, for sure. Android Dust says, uh, yeah, sometimes I think vets are used, are used and then thrown to the curb, literally. That's the impression I get as well. They put veterans in terrible situations in, in conflicts overseas. They have to deal with stuff that you and I would just never think about, like, you know, death and... Yeah, death <laughs> uh, and the stress of all of that. Uh, and then when they come back, they're just sort of they're kicked to the curb. And so that's a good way to, to put it. Sniper Girl says, yeah, it's about right. Uh, I know Trump tried to reduce vet benefits a few times. That's just terrible. Mr. Trump, come on. I'm, I'm not going to – I don't want to criticize American politicians because you guys know I've said all along. That's not my place. I'm an Australian citizen, not an American citizen. I, I, I criticise our politicians here because they're rat bags. But come on, Mr. Trump, don't do that. Don't do that. Why, why, why? You, you know, when I hear uh, Australian politicians do things that disadvantage the less fortunate in our society, uh, the current government we have in this country is a liberal government, which is a conservative government. Easiest way to describe it for, for you American people, think Republican. Um, every time they come into government, they try and reduce social benefits in this country. By social benefits, I mean like unemployment insurance, uh, pensioner stuff. The most disadvantaged people in our society, every time a conservative government comes into power, they reduce and reduce and cut and cut. Uh, and I often think to myself, I really wish this politician here saying, oh, you know, these people don't want a job. Why should we pay them to live? All that sort of stuff. I often think to myself, well, I'd really like you to survive on that benefit that you think is, you know, unjust and too high for this poor unemployed person because I guarantee they couldn't. They get their government cars. They get their free travel, politicians, that is. Uh, they get a, 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 a good salary. Um, so it just really irks me when I when I see politicians speaking that way. How about a little bit more social justice for people? You know, I'm not suggesting we turn into Russia or become communist. I'm not, I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying uh, a good social benefits system benefits everyone in society. You, you know, if people can't eat, they're going to steal. Um if you, if you take away people's income as measly as it is on, on some benefit, if they can't find a job, they're going to have to eat. And the only way, if the only way they can get money is to steal, they're going to steal. Uh, so how is that good for society? Come on. These are the same politicians, by the way, that spend twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 on travel and stuff at the taxpayer's expense. Uh, that's, that, that's, Let's calm down and move away from politics. <laughs> just, just roll me up. I'm, I'm rolling myself up. Um, so, yeah, I understand where you're coming from, a sniper girl. It's just it's disgraceful, not supporting vets. 
Um, Gandra Ross says, yeah, sometimes I think bets are used to try to curve her. And Galen says, pretty much when you leave the service, they try to get rid of anything in your medical record that could uh, get you benefits as bad as they are. Android Law says, is Australia just America with, with our gut? Pretty much. Uh, with our guns, because you all have similar problems. Yeah. It depends on the government of the day as well. Um, not, that, not that the other side are any better necessarily either. They're all rat bags. So, yeah, pretty much. We, because we were a, an English colony, Australia was, you know, convict land. In the olden days, or they said England sent all their convicts to Australia. Um, we were very British for a while, but in, within the last maybe 60 years, 50 or 60 years, we've started to become more Americanized. So, you know, we still, we still respect the Queen like the British do and all that sort of stuff. But culturally, we've become a little bit more like America. Um, and I'm not, I'm not saying that's a good or a bad thing. Um, that's just the way it is. Uh, Smepery says it's uh, it's the opposite of what it says on the tin. Galen says uh, oxymoron much. Liberal Party is conservative. Yeah, yeah, that's right. They call themselves a Liberal Party, but they're conservative. We have a Liberal Party and Labor Party, which is like the conser- the Republicans and the Democrats in the US. So Labor would be Democrat. Liberal would be Republican. Uh, Andrew Dust says, yeah, Snappy Girl says, in the US, the uh, term liberal is on the opposite side of the political. Yeah, I know. It's it's weird. I know it's weird. But I don't know how that worked out this way. Maybe because we follow more the uh, English parliamentary system, and maybe it comes from that. But, yeah, liberal in this country is conservative. <laughs> the Liberal Party is conservative. God save the Queen. That's right. God save the Queen. I'm not a monarchist either, by the way. Even though my mother was English, was British, um, and she believed in the monarchy, I don't. I, I actually think that um, it's, it's ridiculous that the royal family do nothing. I don't know how much tax they pay in, in Britain, but I'm pretty sure they get around that as well. So, yeah, I'm not, I'm not a fan of the royal family. Not like most English people are. We want, there's been a debate in this country about us becoming a republic, so we don't, and the, the, even that just caused a huge amount of stink from, from, the, from the Liberal Party, the Conservative Party, when people want, to, want us to become a republic, which would mean we'd have to change our flag and all that sort of stuff. Smipper says uh, benevolent monarchy monarchy is the most is the most effective form of government. Benevolent monarchy. Mm-hmm. Smipper says sucks without the uh, benevolent part though. <laughs> yes. Look, I don't have anything against the royal family as such, but I don't know. I just think they're all a bit useless. They don't do anything. That's that's my gripe. They just don't do anything. They lead privileged lives and do nothing, really. I mean, the Queen, you know, she does openings and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, some would suggest that she does do stuff. I don't know. I don't know. All right. So uh, I think I've got everything cleaned up that I wanted to. There's just a couple of pieces here, like the, um, the, the ironwork we need to put in. This one's okay. Just wondering why that's part of that group. It's a bit strange. All right, let us open this group up and grab this piece of ironwork so we can put it in our little holes here. Andrew Doss says, I, I never had an opinion in the, on the royal family. I, 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 I tend not to think about them very much, to be honest. Uh, the only reason I bring it up is because you guys know my mother was British and in Australia the monarchy is still important to some people it's never been important to me even growing up as a child it was important to my mother but it was never important to me Uh, 
Uh, I just need to detach this from the group. And close our group back up. Galen says, monarchies are a bit outdated mode of thinking in my... Yeah, I think so too. Uh, they are... There are no rulers ordained by a higher power. No, there aren't. It's what always annoys me with um, any sort of royal family, whether it's the British royal for any royal family in any country. Uh, this whole destined and born to rule mentality or uh, somehow these people are better than the rest of the population because they're royal. That's just crap. Uh, yeah, just crap. I'm sorry. It's just, it's just rubbish. No one is better than anyone else. You would never. No one is born to rule. Yeah. So the, I think that sort of gets in my craw a bit as well. This this whole attitude of somehow these people must be better than everyone else because they're royal. I mean that might have might have, might have flown, you know, in the Middle Ages, but it certainly doesn't anymore. Not in my opinion. Just moving to the local axis, just make it a bit easier for me to move it around. A sniper girl says, uh, I'm an atheist, that's cool, and lack belief in a higher power. So on that note, I agree, Galen. Edo, good to see you, Edo, how are you? How are you, Edo? We're talking about the monarchy and royalty. And I, and how, I was saying how much I don't really like the royal any royal family from any country. This whole born to rule thing. And of course, in in ancient times, but we'll, let's use maybe Egypt as an example of the, the pharaohs. I mean, they, they, they considered themselves gods. That's even worse that somehow these people are a god. Come on, give me a break. I sometimes wonder what's wrong with society, you know. Now, granted, this was back in Egypt thousands of years ago. Maybe people didn't know better back then, but wow. I just think, wow. How? How could people think things like that? Smithbury says, uh, I worship at the altar of the flying spaghetti monster. May his noodly appendage bless you. Ah, oh, Smepper, you always make me laugh. <laughs> uh, Galen says, uh, having a monarchy as a traditional institution is fine as long as they wield no political power, which traditionally the, the Queen and the Britain never has. She's never really been able to influence politics, which she's not supposed to anyway. Ido says, you're good. Uh, I'm finishing some renders in arts for Art Station. Cool. All you, all you guys and girls doing stuff for Art Station. I'm assuming for your portfolio, Edo, because uh, uh, the only reason I say that is because we were talking earlier about um, competitions and a couple of the guys said they wanted to, to enter something in the Art Station competition that's running at the moment. But that's cool, rendering for your um, for your Art Station. Andrew Thus says, uh, God's among men is something I can't, I can't either. I think so. I just think it's so stupid. <laughs> Sniper Girl says, uh, to Smurfbury, isn't Pastafarian a satire on religion and not an actual religion? Android Lust says, uh, finished your work? He's asking Edo. Smurfbury says, depends on who you ask. It's supposed to be satire, though, yeah. Oh, Edo. No, Sniper Echo. <laughs> I'm not paying attention to my Discord. Let me let me catch up here. Bro, is that broken vertical? V v vertice. Broken vertice. Thank you for following the uh, Phil Does 3D Twitch channel. I do appreciate it. Do remember, guys, too, though, to follow, to join the Discord server. I've just popped a link in chat there. Or you can click the blue graphic below my panels to join the uh, Discord server because there's a gallery section there. Everyone's very friendly. Um... Um, I jump in and out of Discord all the time, so if you need to cut, uh, contact me, you can contact me there. So join the Discord server, it's free. Everyone can post links there. Only, only subs can post links in Twitch chat, though, so don't, don't do it in Twitch chat. And I like looking at your work, so 
please feel free to join the Discord server. I just want to look at this um, through this image that Sniper Echo posted. Sniper says realistic, sadly not getting there though, lighting is hard. Let me have a look at this. Because it looks really cool. So this has just been posted by Sniper Echo on the Discord server. Let's uh, let me remember which key it is. There we go. That looks very cool, Snapper Echo. Very nice. Is this what I looked at last year? Similar? You you were creating something similar, maybe last year, beginning of last year, maybe. It was very nice. I like the color. It's very cool. Very very nice. Um. Let me catch up with the chat here. Andrew Lust says to Smurfberry, some people act like they take it seriously, but I know deep down they don't. Snappy Girl says, been to their site a few times. Edo says, ooh, art station competition, that's intense. I don't tend to enter competitions, uh, I have to be honest with you guys and girls, simply because I don't like doing my work for nothing. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to say that you shouldn't, because that's a great thing to do. It's good exposure as well. Um... I just don't like doing unpaid work. <laughs> and I consider competitions unpaid work. Uh, yeah, but that's just me. Just salty old Phil. Smurfery says it's not an actual pasta fairy. They take it seriously. Than that. Galen says she doesn't directly wield power, but in reality we know the Queen suggests something to Parliament. Uh, we'll make some... We'll make the thing move in that. Well, that's true. Move in that direction. Smurfery says, "I'm pretty sure there also there's also a religion for keyboard cat." Smurfery says, "Oh, moody." Android Lust says, "Yeah, it's very moody. It's, it's really nice. Some actually, Sniper Echo." Uh, Android Lust says, "We need a 3D religion. That's what I can get behind." I agree. Let's create our own 3D religion. 3D people of the world unite. As Sniper Girl says to Smurfberry, some of them take themselves pretty damn seriously to the point of wanting colanders as hats or licensed pictures. What's Nightbot doing? Oh, yeah, I know. You know what Night Nightbot's got a mind of its own. It spams my links. I don't know. I, I can't get that robot under control. That, that bot. Mm. Sniper X says, yeah, the same. Tr I, I, thought, I, thought it, I thought I recognized it, but the colors are different slightly. But it looks incredibly cool, really nice. I really like the um I like the colour. It looks it looks cool. Um Android Lost says this is part of the same map as force. No, because it's a totally crazy shader, but you can't see most of it there. I need to get the lighting right. Uh it's the mid range level textures. Okay. Because Sniper Echo has been working on stuff for his landscape for um, for lotting and all that sort of thing, which is cool. Like procedural lotting stuff. Galen says all the vertices. Sniper says Android last year the same. Mid range lighting is no way correct. Hail the verts. Android last says leg mug. Leg mug. It's good to see you, leg mug. How are you, buddy? Legmark says, woo, 2 a.m. and I'm back from the gym. Why do you go to the gym late? Why do you go so late? Uh, and 3D religion, I'll put myself forward as the living incarnation for God in this new religion. <laughs> why do you go to the gym at 2 a.m., 1 a.m.? Why do you go to the gym so late? It's madness, dude. Madness, I say. <laughs> uh, how are you feeling, by the way, too? Because I know that... Um, you're expecting to be a bit sore because I know that when you when you haven't done the gym for a while and you work those muscles out, you can be sore for a couple of days afterwards. Legwork says, yo, Snipe, Snipebot, Nightbot, spamming. Sniper Girl says, Antio Android, Lust Religion, only a goddess Maya is the only one god of the modeling world. Well, that can't, Maya, we can't have that. I'm afraid, Sniper Girl. 
because we have the Goddess Max as well, and I'm sure Legmod would say the Goddess Cinema 4D. Android Lost says to Sniper Girl, oh shit, the 3D religion is immediately divided. Yes, I know, Goddess Maya versus the Max God, or 3D Coat Demigod. <laughs> We're going to tear our religion apart before it's even started. <laughs> Sniper says, oh, they, uh, hey, have you heard the good news about the Sky Cake? What Sky Cake, Smurfberry Barbecue? What's the good news about the Sky Cake? Uh, Galen says, Blender is X Machina. Android Lust says to Sniper Girl, can't talk back about Blender. Can't talk bad about Blender, sorry. Sniper Wrecker will ban you. That's right, you watch out, Sniper <laughs> Sniper Wrecker likes his Blender. And, and Blender is very good, but Sniper is a mod, so he has unusual amounts of power. Um, Ido says, uh, I'm a ZBrush Lord. Well, there you go. <laughs> So we have Edo as a ZBrush Lord. We've got Maya goddesses, the Max gods and goddesses, the blended demigods. Legmog says, uh, I'll no doubt be hurting tomorrow, but no pain, no gain. That's true. So they say, but major bummer today, my little cat had to... Oh, no. Don't tell me things like that, guys. It's going to make me cry. I'm still, I'm still getting over the death of my cat. And that happened like... Over 12 months ago now. It happened about a year and a half ago. That's really sad, Leg Mob. I hate it when anything dies, but particularly a pet. I, I, I treated my cat like a child, and it was devastating when she died. It really, really upset me. Really did. I mean, I'd had her for like <clears throat> 20 years, so she was quite old, but very upsetting. So I'm sorry to hear that, Legmog. Sniper Rekka says, hammer time. <laughs> Sniper Girl says, Blender, no, no, don't you say that, Sniper Girl. Blender does not suck. Come on, guys. We all like each, every 3D program is good. We don't play favourites. Don't play favourites. <laughs> she's kidding. I know she's kidding. Smurper says, uh, Sky Cake is a joke on Patton Oswald, comedian, about religion ar religion arguments using desserts as stand-ins for God and gods and heaven. Okay. Sounds like that sounds funny and cool. Sniper goes <laughs> uh, Galen says the uh, the new lantern term Deix Machina Machina is a translation of a Greek phrase that means literally a god from a machine. Machine, in this case, refers to the crane that that held a god over the stage in ancient Greece and Roman drama. Well, there you go. I didn't know that. Uh, Sniper Girl says, uh, wow, sorry to hear that. Yeah, I am too. I'm really sorry to hear that about, the, about your cat. Android Lost says, sorry, Legmog, I know... The feels, I still miss my dog and she died every year ago. Yeah, I know it too. And Legmog says, yeah, it was uh, was the right thing to do, though. She had a tumour, was predicted four to six months to live, but I uh, hung in there for two years. But today was a big downward slope, absolutely 100% sure it would have. It was right to have her put down. Uh, again, I know exactly where you're coming from, Legmog, because that's what I had to have done to my cat in the end. Um, she started uh, having kidney problems, losing a lot of weight, and she would start meowing. And I don't know these really like painful meows. And I knew when that started happening that she was not long for this world. So I called the vet out. Uh, he came out and gave her an injection. She went to sleep, and yep. Yeah. So yeah, I, I know where you're coming from. It was still incredibly difficult, and I still miss her. I really do. You're going to get me crying. <laughs> um, lots of comfort hugs, as Galen says, yes. Yes. We love our pets. So, like I said, they're, they're like surrogate children pets. 
so it's incredibly upsetting when they when when they when they have to leave uh, which is why I actually haven't got another cat to replace um, Annabelle which was my cat's name because I just can't bear the thought of another one dying <laughs> you know if you know what I mean I, I just can't bear it I, 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 I couldn't bear it again so I've, I've decided no pets I, they don't live as long as people and it's it's devastating when they when they die and which they all do. It's that's why. Legmark says, uh, "Well, here's to all the amazing pets that are no longer with us." I, I I'll drink to that, Legmark, to all of our amazing pets who have left us. And Galen says, "Fur babies are the best babies." I agree. Fur babies. I haven't heard that expression, but that, that's a beautiful way to think of it, Galen. Fur babies. I love it. Android Lust says, uh, pets are friends and family. They are. Smurfberry says, that happened with my cat last year. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that too, Smurfberry. Uh, Smurfberry says, the vet suggested that they uh, had a very nice cat named Cherry that I could adopt. And I was like, uh, thanks, but no. I'm not in a position to get another cat and deal with this again. No, I thought the same thing, Smurfberry. I... As much as I love cats and I would love to have another cat from a kitten like I had Annabelle because they're so cute, uh, I could not bear it dying again. And it will because they don't live like, as long as we do. And it would just, it would devastate me. It would devastate me because I'm, it, it devastated me when she died. It really did. So I, I can't go through that again. I just can't. As much as I would like to have another another cat. Um, but yeah. Uh, uh, there are a lot of animals, unfortunately, that go to like animal shelters and are put down because people don't take them. And uh, sometimes I feel guilty about that, but I, I just can't do it. I can't do it. I don't know if you guys can hear that noise going on in the background. It's next door doing some sort of work. Hopefully it's not too annoying for you guys. If it is, I'll close my window so we don't hear it quite so much. Oh, that's so cute. Galen just posted a picture of a puppy. Oh, a dog. I don't know if it's a puppy. It says, may Maverick rest in peace. Is this, was this your dog, Galen? Or? Was, that, was that your dog, Galen? It's loud enough to hear? Okay. Let me close the window. I'll be back in two secs. There we go. Windows all closed. Um, Legmark says, yeah, a cat named Twinkle was got from a rescue place. She found abandoned on a building site at uh, age six months with kittens. Was hit and miss if she even survived after she was found. So uh, given that, I like to think uh, she ended up having a happy life with us. And Galen says, <coughs> pardon me, Galen says, that was my last fur baby. Uh, he was a blind English bulldog. Let's have a look at it. <clears throat> Pardon me. See, you're making me choke up, guys. You really are. Oh. So cute. Blind English bulldog. Look, he looks like a beautiful dog. You know, uh, I, I do have pictures of, um, of my cat, but I removed them from my hard drive after she died and I haven't put them back yet. Because I couldn't even look at them. It just would upset me. 
but she was the runt of the litter as well. When when I got her, she was the smallest of the um of the litter, and even as an adult, she was a really tiny cat. So and she lived a good life. I like to think I gave her a good life. She was very happy for the twenty or so years that I had her. Because I had it from like childhood sort of thing. Well, not not quite childhood, but mid teenager sort of years. Uh, Galen says that was one of her. Andrew Lust says, uh, did he go blind or in his in his older years? And Lake Mog says that he look he does look awesome. He looked beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I love pets, 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 animals. I love animals because they're just so. I don't want to use the word innocent, but they, they, they don't expect anything. You know what I mean? They're uncon- they give you unconditional love. Not like people. <laughs> Not all people. You guys, are, you guys are wonderful, but you know what I mean. Just that unconditional love you get from a pet or from an animal is just wonderful. Uh, Galen says he went blind early because of poor breeding and getting prolapsed tear ducts. Yes. Andrew Luss says, yeah, people can be evil. <laughs> I mean, we even fight over what the best 3D modeling programs are. Well, that's true. And which which program is going to become the, the, the overriding God? We, we even fight about that, don't we? People can be evil. They certainly can be evil. There are some nasty, nasty people in the world too. Not you guys. You guys are all wonderful. Uh, but there are some really terrible people in the world. So people can be evil, evil, evil. That's for sure, but not not animals. Animals, unconditional love. They they don't get well. They, they do get jealous. Actually, I've I've, I've had cats that uh, start to fight each other because they're jealous of too much attention being given to one. But generally, they're not. Also known as cherry eye, Galen said. Oh, cherry eye. Okay. Um, Andrew Doss says, my dog went blind in her older years after her after her hearing started to go out. It saddens me so much. And Lake Mock says, yes, all this fighting over the best 3D software nonsense. I feel sorry for everyone who, uh, who thinks Max, Maya or Blender are the best because they simply uh, uh, do not realise Cinema 4D is the best. What a surprise. Legmog, what a surprise. Legmog uses Cinema 4D, by the way, guys and girls. You guys, I don't know if you know that, but he's a Twitch streamer as well. And it's un- simply untrue, Legmog. Everyone knows Max is the best. <gasps> no, you know I don't mean that. They're all very good. We're tolerant of every 3D program in this stream. Tolerant. I'm not saying they're the best, but we're tolerant of them. No, they're all very good. <laughs> and Galen says, wow, I didn't know Cinema 4D was still around. There you go. You've been burned, like my bird. Um, Sniper Girl says, uh, how dare you talk bad about the goddess Maya? Android Lust says, we have a Cinema 4D min- uh, minority over here. Clearly Maya and ZBrush are the top flyers. <laughs> well, I would argue Max is the best. Certainly not Cinema 4D, though. (laughs) You guys, I actually have used Cinema 4D. I used to use it years ago when I was doing web design because that's what the studio used. And it is very good. I haven't used it for for a very long time, though. So it's probably – it could be crap now for all I know. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, Andrew Lost says we have a – Edo says final render's done. Yay! Oh, cool, Edo. 
Um, Pop, yeah, Edo, are you on the Discord server? If you want to, if you if you're uploading new stuff to your art station, and you want us to check it out, pop a link on the Discord server in the gallery section, or even just pop a link to whatever render you're doing if you want. Because I'd love to have a look at it. I'd love to show it on the stream if you want. You don't have to. No pressure. But we love to look at it. No, at least I love to look at it, and they, they're going to be forced to look at it because, you know, that's just the way it is. <laughs> um, Andrew Lust says, what is Max again? Oh, you get the stink eye for that one. What is Max again indeed, Android Lust? Dalen says, I, I pray to the pixel, pi pixels, polys, and verts. They remain the same regardless of technology, of theology. I agree. Uh, Legmark says, yeah, Max, isn't that that busy pop drink from Pepsi? <laughs> uh, yes, that's right, Legmark. Android Lost says, yeah, Edo posted it in Discord already. Oh, okay. Oh, he did too. Thank you for pointing that out, Android Lust. I, I get carried away between my modelling and paying attention to this chat that I forget about my Discord. Let's have a look. That looks really cool. Very nice. That's a, that's a very nice render, actually. I like that. I love the model. Really, really nice. Really, really interesting, actually. Um, Snappy Girl says, honestly, my opinion on software is the same as Phil's. Whenever you use, you, whatever you use, you use. Doesn't matter what you use, it's how you use it and how good the final product is. That's exactly right. You use what you feel most comfortable with. They're all very good. Through every piece of 3D software now is incredibly good. Uh, so there is no benefit really from one over the other. You just use what you're most comfortable with or what you can afford as well because that pay, plays a big part too. Um, not everyone can afford to spend huge amounts of money on 3D software and that's completely understandable and unnecessary because they're all very good. And he says, I'm about... To I'm all about the exposure. <laughs> it looks great, Edo. I really love it. Love it, love it. Nice. Nice render too. Yeah, it looks great. Good stuff. If you want to check out the other stuff that Edo did and posted to the Discord server, jump on there, guys, and look at it. Cause it is really cool. Android does says to Galen, but... Uh, they are manipulating the polys the wrong way. Sniper Girl says, I'm loving it. Yes, it does. It looks great. I love the art style too, Sniper Girl. Smurfberry says, clearly we want to have to invoke the names of the old gods, Sculpt 3D on the... Oh, Sculpt 3D on the... At the Amiga. Wow. I used to have a Commodore Amiga. <sighs> Those were the days when I was incredibly, incredibly young. I was a child. Uh, but I did. I had an Amiga. Loved my Amiga. Loved it. Memories, memories, memories. And then the software of the old religion, Smepery, that's right. Uh, Sniper Girl says, shouldn't we also invoke a, a old gods that became new gods? Blender came out in 1998. When did Max come out? Because oh, I've, I've been using Max since version 1, when it was called 3D Studio, before it became Max. Um, I, I can't remember when Max actually first came out either. Must have been a long time ago. Android Lost says, yeah, all 3D software is perfectly fine as long as it's, it's not DAS 3D. Well, I have to agree there. I would have to agree. Uh, what was the other soft Bryce? Do you remember Bryce, which was a 3D environment software? I don't know if it's still around. That, that was pretty crappy too. Uh, but at the time, I think it was the only type of software like that on the market for doing environment stuff. Um, Galen says, uh, isn't Daz 3D like hitting the easy button? Yeah, Bryce was like that too. Sniper Girl says, uh, what is Daz 3D? <laughs> Smepper says, 3D Studio was 1996. Wow, there you go. 
Wow. But I, I've been playing with 3D software since I was a kid. Like, you know, I got my first computer when I was 10 years old and I pretty much immediately started playing around with graphics stuff. I used to draw a lot more was then as well, like paint and draw as a kid. I don't tend to do that much anymore. I don't draw as much as I should. I, I used to like drawing. Um, I, I prefer digital work now because painting is incredibly messy. I never used to like having paint everywhere, cleaning brushes, all that sort of stuff. But I drawing, I used to really enjoy drawing. I haven't done it for a while now, though. Okay, I think, I think, I think all of these ones might be done. I've just got to go through and start um, moving a couple of the couple of the raw iron pieces to make them look less perfect. Galen says, Daz 3D, buy all assets, clump them together and call it a character. Sniper Girl says, wow, their realistic character models look so very creepy to me for some reason. <laughs> yeah. You can make a good living on Daz, by the way, um, if you want to sell those sort of models. I, d I don't. I know, I know a couple of people that have, though. Uh, they, they get a lot of um, a lot of people use their software. A lot, of, a lot of people that aren't like you and me, who don't use proper three D software all the time. They just they're people that want to create artwork really quickly. They they tend to buy Daz models, the characters, and use them for their for their artwork. So the general population. Let's just, let's just call them the general population. They they tend to like Daz. So if you want to sell work on Daz. You can make a good living there. Well, again, not, not you can't. You need another job, but yeah. As far as sales go, from what I've heard, it's it's pretty decent. If you like creating that sort of thing, but I agree, they do look creepy. <laughs> okay, let's start going through this now, and um, I'm just going to isolate these so it's much easier for me to see what I'm doing. I'm going to ungroup these because I need to start um, attaching all these pieces together. You are not grouped. Good. Let's uh, let's go. Let me do an edit poly on top of this. I don't want to remove the uh, UV mapping we've got because I need to be able to reuse the same texture map on all of the pieces. Android Dust says, uh, I would say Daz 3D is good for people who don't want to actually create anything, but you can always tell that the that a character is rendered in Daz, you can. It has that look about it, doesn't it, Android Dust? I know, I know where you come from. Just, just has that look. Now, I'm just going to start going through here and just making a couple of tweaks to a couple of the bars here and there. Just so the thing isn't quite so perfect. We're working our local axes as well, I think. Uh, let me undo that. Uh, I don't want the top bit, I just want this bit. Oh, bugger it, we'll take both of them, why not? Um, Galen says the models and Daz are nice, but their eyes are always seem off. They, yeah. Um, Sniper Girl says to Android Lost, yeah, looking at a few images, I agree. Smurfberry says they all have that studio lighting, white bounce lights everywhere. <laughs> it's because they're, they're not really artists. I, I don't want to discourage, I don't disparage the people on Daz that make stuff. I shouldn't, shouldn't not, not call them artists. They are artists, but um, a lot of that sort of stuff, like I said, is, is people that aren't artists buy it to create art.
Okay, so I've just sort of moved the rotation on that a little bit, so it looks like it's been bent a little bit. Let's just keep moving around. We'll just hit one here and there and make a couple of changes. Um. I might get two nuts. Android Lost says that's what that's what it is. It's uh, the Daz eyes that stand out so much. Okay. Now, now, if this was if I was going to be using this model myself, I would actually delete a couple of these to make it look like you know a couple of them have been knocked out. Uh, I'm not going to do it for this one that I'm putting in the store though because. I guarantee you, if I was to remove one here and there, like I did for the UE4 project we did when we did the fence, I, I will have people messaging me saying, you you effed up this model, you forgot one of your bars. I, I, I guarantee it. So I'm not going to do it. But I would do it for my own render. And I'm going to do it when we come to render the beauty render anyway. But for the, for the pieces I'm putting into the store, I'm not going to do it because people will just think that I messed the model up and forgot to put a bar in. So, Andrew Lust says, uh, Smurfery says, speaking of eyes, Andrew Lust says, uh, you'll miss, you'll mess with people's OCD. <laughs> That's right. Galen says, uh, Ben, just one bar. I, I'm still going to, I'm still making these changes here and there where, so everything is not completely the same because it's just more realistic. You, it's just more realistic. It's a terrace. It's been sitting out. It's it's old. People, it's a, they're going to have moved. They're going to have been knocked. They're never ever going to be completely perfect because the real world is not perfect. But sometimes people just expect things to be perfect. I know you can probably hear that outside again. I'm sorry, guys. I can't do anything about it. I've closed the house up, but they're doing some sort of drilling outside. They choose to do it right when I stream too. Like it's been quiet all morning. Um, Smokeberry says the eyes they modelled for Alita. I actually want to see that movie uh, for Alita in the new Battle Angel movie. Are uh, are each something like eight point five or nine million polygons? Yeah, Sniper Girl says. Do you guys think I should go pro on Art Station when I start releasing the gas station van renders? It's looking like a perfect like a perk of pro is that results of people that have pro on ArtStation appear first. I didn't know that. I don't have a pro account on ArtStation. I think Smurfberry does though. Ask him. <laughs> but if you want to go pro, go pro. Um, Smurfberry says, no, I'm not. I thought you were pro Smurfberry. Okay. There are other perks to being having a pro membership on ArtStation apart from that. Particularly if you sell your work there, you get a bigger commission. I don't really feel the need to have a, get a pro account with them, though. I have my own website. So. Smoker says, but if you're going to be applying for positions, you might as well. Uh, Smoker says, for comparison... Gollum's entire character model from Lord of the Rings was something like 50,000 polygons. I've actually come, I've seen that model. It's, it's not, a nice looking model actually, the Gollum model. Okay, let's keep moving around. 
Andrew Glass is asking, is Pro a monthly membership? Uh, Snappy Girl says, yeah, true, mostly thinking about potential exposure. Yeah, that, that's fair enough. Everybody has their own reasons for wanting to have a Pro account. I'm not suggesting, <laughs> I'm not saying you shouldn't have one. I'm going to turn up Angle Snap here. I was wondering why I was getting really severe snapping happening. Android Loss says she really has 8.5 million polygons. Smebri says she has 8.5 million per eye. Well, the eyes are a big part of that character of Alita, though, for that, for that movie particularly. And it does look cool. The ads that I've seen for it look make it look very like a very cool movie. Look, and I, I'm familiar with the manga cartoon, so I'll be interested to see how they how they've taken that and put it and transferred it to actual film. So 8.5 million polys per eye. Well, there you go. You can never complain about having too many polys against no parry. <laughs> Android Lust says, that's crazy. I want to know why. Uh, Snappy Girl says, uh, it's a monthly membership, $10 per month, or you can do an $84 per year by the look of it. Which, yeah. Smurfberry says, um, they modeled all of the fine structure details and fibers in the iris. Sniper Girl is asking, has anybody seen a leader? Is it good? No, yeah, I'd like to. I'm, I'm, I'm planning on seeing it. I will, uh, because I, I'm, I'm a big fan of manga, Japanese manga. So I want to see how, what they've done, how they've done it. And the ads do look really cool. So Murphberry says, yeah, I saw it last week. It's a really fun movie. Cool. Well, I will definitely check it out then, because I have seen the ads for it, and I do want to I, – I was planning on going and um, watching it. Um, let's just rotate you a little bit. Sniper Girl says, I've been thinking of seeing it but was scared, to be honest. I hear a hear of late movies based on anime manga typically aren't that good. Generally, I found yeah they haven't been that good. But I'm interested to see it. I liked it from the ads. The visual effects look like they've been done really well. Um, like I said, I've watched the manga cartoon, so I'm going to. I'm curious to see how well they've done it, taking that cartoon and changing it or well, incorporating it into live action. Anyway, so we'll, so I'll watch it. I will see it. I will go to the cinema and I'll watch it. But you are right. Generally, they make a pretty, pretty horrible movie from manga. No, I, went a bit, um, I made that one really obvious, but that's okay. We're only going to have one of those in, in the um, in the railing. The rest of them are going to be much more subtle. Mepri says, in my opinion, it's the best live action adoption adaptation of any anime or manga to date. Well, that's that that's a bold statement from Smurfberry Barbecue there. 
I will I will definitely go and watch it. Go to the cinema and watch it because it does look cool. I love manga. Uh, and I'm always interested to see new special effects in movies as well. And how well they've been done or otherwise. How well or how badly they've been done, I should say. But from what I can see from the uh, ads, it does look like the, the effects have been done well. Android Lost says, I may have to check it out one day. Yeah, well, I, I'm, I'm going to see it. You've just convinced me, Smurfberry. I, I was thinking about it because of the ads, and uh, you convinced me. I'll probably maybe go and look, see it over the weekend, see how I go. See how I go. Certainly over the next couple of weeks anyway. So push this one this way. Trying to work out how, how far around we are. Uh, let's take one from here. Uh, Ido says I'm about to upload Venom. Cool. Now, Venom was he was working on yesterday. He was working on the teeth. I look forward to seeing it, Ido. Android Lost says, uh, and a year from now I'll say say the same thing. I still need to watch that movie. <laughs> No, I actually, I prefer to watch movies in my home, to be honest with you, than going into a cinema. But um, if it's a good movie, I'm prepared to go into a cinema and watch it. But I like the comfort of my own couch and my own TV, I have to admit. You know, I can go to the fridge when I want to, that sort of thing. Get something to eat, get a drink. Uh, Snappy Girl says, with uh, everything that's been going on, thinking of seeing Alita as a reward for getting through everything. Well, that sounds like a great idea, Sniper Girl. You should. Treat yourself. Go and see Alita. Smurper says, like the live-action Ghost in the Shell, oh, that was pretty butts as an adaption of its source material, completely tone-deaf, but not faithful at all. I didn't like Ghost in the Shell, the movie. I thought that was pretty crappy. I love the anime, I love the manga, but man, I, I, I wasn't a fan of the um, of the movie. I, th I thought the movie was pretty crappy. And yeah, n not really the ghost in the shell that I'm familiar with from the manga. Maybe that's the reason I didn't like it. You haven't posted yet, have you, Edo? No. Smurper says, a leader, on the other hand, follows the source pretty well and sets a good tone with the character you feel invested in. Sniper Girl says, yeah, I hated Ghost in the Shell as well. Yeah, I did too. Uh, Smurper says, uh, the live action gets only had looks going for it. And Galen says, uh, I like some of the modelling in Ghost. I must suggest the, the visuals were nicely done. Um, but the story and, yeah, I, I just thought the story was not good. It, it wasn't the Ghost in the Shell that I knew anyway. Uh, but I, I can't fault the visuals. The visual, visuals were very nice. I'm a purist, though. Don't mess with the, with the Ghost in the Shell story. If you're going to do it, do it properly.
Um, a couple of these I'm not going to rotate, I'm just going to sort of move them. Okay, that's I think where we started there. That's probably enough. There's just a couple here and there that have been moved, rotated, not made made a little bit less perfect. Subtle but important. Uh, actually, I knew I'd do that. I want to start attaching these pieces together as well, so stop that. There we go. It'll help to reduce some of this huge list we've got going here of all of our bits and pieces. Uh, Sniper Girl says, to date the only live action that I've liked based on anime was the Japanese Death Note movies. Yeah, I saw that too, even though they didn't follow the story of the uh, manga, the characters felt good, right? Yep. I like Death Note, the, uh, the original cartoon, though. That's cool. But I did see the live-action version of it as well. And it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. It wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. Um, Smepper says, uh, Gitz has always had kick-ass writers. They should have hired some of the uh, some of them for the live-action screenplay. Sniper Girl says to Smurfberry, that would have been nice. Smurfberry says even the, um, even the Arise Soft reboot had some had solid writing. Not familiar with that one. Let us start to attach these pieces together. Okay, I think these are all one piece anyway, so that's okay. Uh, these are grouped. I don't want to group them. I want to attach them all together. The same with these. So I'm going to... Just undo that really quickly and isolate these. Looks like we have a um a spline hidden in there as well. We need to get rid of. Let us collapse the stack and attach. We're going to do an attached list here. I'm going to risk it. You know, I never, I don't like these attached lists in Max because they, they can always have problems. But we'll try it. It's much quicker, that's for sure. We may be okay because it's not textured up. Uh, I, I found doing an attached list can sometimes really mess with Max's, with the texturing of an object. I don't know why. Max just loses its mind. Um, Sniper Girl says, well, when you have movies like Dragon Ball Evolution, the Japanese adaption of Death Note live action was amazing. Android Lust says, I was told to skip and forget a Dragon Ball, even though ever came out. To skip and forget Dragon Ball Evo ever came out. Sniper Girl says, yes. Realize Dragon Ball Evolution wasn't made in Japan. You all know what I meant by that. Sniper Girl says uh, to Android Lust, it's horrible. <laughs> okay, I, I just want to see if we've got, um, if I UV map these or not, because I can't remember. So I'm just going to throw an unwrap down and open up the UV editor and see what's going on. Did I UV map? I don't think I UV map these, did I? Let's do a quick save because I don't want to lose all the work we've done and it's been a while since we've done a save. Uh, Android Lust says, I don't remember seeing you, you be mad. No, I don't think I did Android Lust. I think you're right. I think I forgot to. I'm pretty sure I forgot to UV map them. Uh. Which could be a problem because we've made three copies for three other steps. 
Um, no, maybe not. Maybe we can paste the UV map between them. We'll see how we go. Because you know we have a, we've got the no steps, one step, blah, 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 blah. I want to try and reuse the same texture for everything, uh, but because I didn't UV map them before I made them, could be a problem. We'll see how we go, though. Let's send it through to uh, Unfold 3D and uh, UV map it. Come on. There we go. Let us do this one, I think. Smurper says Edge of Tomorrow. I, I, yeah, no, I enjoyed Edge of Tomorrow with Tom Cruise. Uh, Edge of Tomorrow was a pretty fun popcorn sci fi flick, but don't consider it to be in the same vein as, say, Death Note, Alita, or Gits adaptions because the source material is light novels, not a manga or anime. Yeah, I enjoyed um, Edge of Tomorrow too. I thought it was pretty good. For that sort of film, you know. It was popcorn sci-fi. It was pretty cool. Sniper Girl says to Android Lust, put it this way, according to Google, Dragon Ball Evolution runtime was 1 hour and 40 minutes. Uh, I think they owe me way more than 1 hour and 40 minutes of my life back due to Recovery from PTSD I got from that movie. <laughs> Galen says, uh, in before texture stretching. Let's look at it to see how we're going. I'm just going to turn off that uh, orange there. No, I think we're good. I don't think we have any texture stretching. I think we'll be okay. Easy way to find out. Let's send it back to Max. Let us throw down a... A checkable texture. It's going to turn on shaded and realistic, and I'm going to let's turn up the tiling. And let's assign this texture that we've just put down. I think that's pretty good. I don't think we're getting any texture stretching. We should be okay. Well, it's pretty even. Difficult to tell because we have some so much geometry going on here, but um, I think it's okay. Well, let's get rid of that texture now. I'm just going to assign a standard texture to it. Okay, let's jump out of isolation. Uh, now let's work on this one. I'll do this one and then we might call it a day. Um, let's just ungroup it. I, I don't think I UV map these either. Let's do an attached list on these as well. And let's send this over to Unfold. OK. 
Okay, we'll try this one again. You got a shoot off Snapper Echo? No problem. I'm just about to finish up. I just want to get this um, last piece here textured up. Thanks for being here, Sniper. Hopefully I'll see you next week. I'm back again on Monday. I'll be live again on Monday next week. Let's throw down the texture. And again, I think that'll be okay. Let's send that back to Max. You have a great weekend, Sniper Echo. Okay, I can close that down. And we can check this one real quick. <laughs> Max, 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 why you do this to me? Max, come on. It's because if I don't hover over the object as I zoom in, Max loses its mind. Um, but I think that that'll be okay for us too. I think that's pretty even. Difficult to tell again because it's a deep, detailed sort of model here on there, but it looks, I didn't see any stretching happening. I think we'll be good. Let's just assign a plain color again. Jump out of isolation mode. And do a save. But I think we might call it a day, guys and girls. I do want to thank you though for being here and hanging out and watching and for showing your work, Edo. Um, I look forward to seeing the Venom character when you post images of that as well. Um, remember, I will be back again on Monday next week. That's when I'll be live at 5 p.m. Pacific. Uh, the stream will go out on Friday and Saturday, but that's a replay of yesterday's and today's stream. So thank you for being here. I'm, I'm so happy everything's is, uh, is we're good with your mum, um, Sniper Girl. Thank you guys and girls for hanging out with me and for watching. You have a great weekend and hopefully I will see you all again on Monday next week. You just posted. I don't see it. <laughs> you don't? Oh, hang on. Uh, you did just post. Let's just have a quick look at Edo's um, Venom character here before we finish up for the day. Very nice. Yes, very nice. I see you got the, the teeth look great, actually. That's such a creepy character. I haven't watched the movie Venom, but I've seen the trailers for it, and that character is incredibly creepy. <laughs> but the model's looking great, Edo. Nice work. Looks really good. You all go, you guys have a great weekend and I will see you on Monday next week. See you guys.